Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are all welcome back to Black Rose TV NG. My name is Rubeh Muhammad Sanisu, and if this is your first time on my channel, you are welcome. I am pleased to have you. So just do me a favor by clicking on that subscribe button. Yeah, that one right there. Thank you. And let me tell you a little bit of secret. There is an notification bell beside it. If you click on it, you will be the first person to get notified whenever I upload a new video. So to be part of the family, just do that. And also, if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being here and I appreciate the love and support. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, comment, and share it. Thank you. So we all know what time of what time of the year it is. It is the best time of the year because the most beautiful month of the year is just around the corner. It's in a few days, a little two to three days, something like that. So in this video, I am going to show you, or we, I am going to talk about how we can get prepared for Ramadan. I'm just going to be randomly talking about Ramadan, the preparations, and then a little bit of, you know, advices and tips here and there. So do stick with me till the end of this video, and we'll see how things work out. Ramadan, that is, Ramadan 2020 has been a year, has been a year, that, a year of surprise, and it has... For some people, it has been the best Ramadan for them, and for some people, it has been the opposite. But this year, 2020, I'm happy now we are free of lockdown, we're free of quarantine, we're free of almost like, I can't say we are totally free, but to some extent, things have lessened now. So, this Ramadan 2020, I'm happy now we get to host a bar with people, we get to, you know, do a lot of things that we couldn't do the previous year. So, I'm just going to take a moment, and I want all of us to take this moment. To just thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us the ability to reach this year because if we look at the life, like if we look at the span between the previous year and this year, a lot of people are will be absent on our if our table, a lot of people will be absent in this Ramadan. I don't know if I'll be able to reach Ramadan, or we don't even know if we'll be able to reach Ramadan, go through it completely and even reach the next months to come. So we just I just want you and I to take a moment to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with the life, for blessing us to reach this time of the year. We all know the blessings, we all know the benefits, we all know the bonuses we get in Ramadan. So this is a really big blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. And for that I say alhamdulillah. So Ramadan as we might have as, as some of us might have the idea wrongly, especially non-Muslims, it is not the hungry month of Ramadan, y'all. It is the most blessed, the month of mercy, the month of... I can't even list them because the list is endless. But if you want to know more about Ramadan and what it, what it entails, I have my own Ramadan series for the year 2020. I'll put the link, or maybe it might just come up here. I think at the right top corner of your screen, do, don't hesitate to click on it to watch the videos, but I will still upload the playlist at the end of this video so that you get to know what Ramadan is. But for the sake of this video and for the sake to just rush things up, I'm going to explain a little bit of what Ramadan is. Ramadan is the one that Muslims fast from dawn to dusk. Did I get it right? Yeah, from Fajr to Maghrib. So within that period of time, that is where we Muslims abstain from eating, drinking, uh, sexual intercourse, and a lot of things that we have been advised to, you know, just move, uh, hold on for a while. And Ramadan is not a month that we press pause for all our illegal activities that we carry out before Ramadan. It is a month where it is our starting point of turning a new life in our lives. Because when Ramadan comes, mostly what people do is, oh, the idea that we, most of us have is, okay, this is a month where I have to give in my full energy, I have to put in all that I can, I have to put in everything that I have to be able to make sure that I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, it is. But what we tend to forget is, after Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is present before Ramadan, is present in Ramadan and will be present after Ramadan. So it is not that 
we should press pause on whatever it is that we do that we feel is taking us away from Allah. And when Ramadan comes, we put in our much effort, we put in all we can to get closer to Allah. And after Ramadan, we go back to our old ways. Now, Ramadan is a month where we are, where it gives you the ability to turn a meal with, it gives you the ability to, to mend your ways, to change those old, those bad habits that we have, those activities that we do outside of Ramadan, maybe, like in the rest of the year, we've been really. Like we've been committing a lot of sins, we've been doing things that have been taking us away from Allah. So when Ramadan comes, it is time for us to stop everything. And like, I mean like literally stop. I know there are things that you cannot stop, but little by little, it helps you in stopping things. So it is like a rehabilitation for Muslims. It cleanses your soul, it brings you a lot of peace and tranquility. It does a lot of things. So this is just Ramadan. So we need to be mentally prepared for Ramadan. We need to be physically and spiritually prepared as well for Ramadan. How can we get mentally prepared for Ramadan? First of all, this pandemic, at like 2020 and 2021, has been a year, to be honest, with all of this. And we can, like in the history of us, <laughs> like in the history of man, in the history of the, in the history of the world, this year will be an unforgettable year, to be honest. We all know that because people have been, those who don't have mental illnesses now have suffered from depression, anxiety, PTSD, you name it. Like a lot of mental illnesses are bothering people. So we need to be mentally prepared. And for me, I believe that Ramadan is a, is a therapeutic month for everyone because you tend to focus on, like it gives you this feeling that I need to focus on something. I need to focus on something. Like, I need to focus on myself. I need to work on myself, as I said earlier, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, in Ramadan, like all these dunya distractions that we put ourselves into, that we give much priority when Ramadan comes, we just shut everything down, and you are focusing mostly on your own self, on how to be a better person, on how to just perfect your imperfections, even though nobody is perfect except Allah Azza So in Ramadan, I believe and I will and we all can testify if you truly, if you truly hold on to the fundamentals of Ramadan, like if you truly hold on to the meaning of Ramadan, the essence, like what the essence of Ramadan, you will feel that connection. To be honest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said it does not burden a soul with what it cannot take. After every hardship comes ease. So after all the hardship throughout the rest of the year, Ramadan is our ease. For me, like yes, that verse works in like it works in different aspects of life, but when it comes to like therapy and you know leaving yourself your yearly stress, I believe Ramadan is our Ursula. Uh, Ramadan is our Yusra because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us like our words are multiplied every little act of kindness every little good deed is multiplied and what is like it's gigantic so Ramadan is a month of therapy and spiritually you prepare yourself for Ramadan by you know engaging in a lot of Taraweeh and reading the Quran and you know the kill and salah and a lot of things that are a lot of good deeds that you can do in Ramadan that will make you be spiritually present in Ramadan and also uh, physically you need to discipline yourself physically Ramadan is not just about hunger in the real essence of Ramadan is not just for you to be hungry to be hungry to not eat or drink anything from you know for your children no it is for us to feel what we less privileged feel because like for some people every day is Ramadan. They hardly find something to put in their stomachs because they don't have much. They are not, some are even homeless, they don't have a home, they don't have a roof over their heads, some do not have clothes, some you know, some don't have a pot to put, some do not have food to put in their stomachs. So Ramadan when you're fasting and you feel that hunger burning in your stomach, you start thinking, 
subhanAllah, there are a lot of people that actually go through this every day. So why not help them? And the help does not stop in Ramadan, it continues till after Ramadan. I know it is like it's it's not everybody that is blessed with that is privileged to have enough to give out to, to feed people. But in Ramadan, people this is one thing that I love about Ramadan. It brings about brotherhood, togetherness. You know, this like everybody wants to just give out. Everyone wants to get deeds no matter how you want to be rewarded. So Ramadan brings about brotherhood, togetherness. So Ramadan is a magical time of the year. To be honest, it's like <laughs> talking about Ramadan is just something like I can't describe it. We all know the feeling, but we cannot describe it. To be honest, so Ramadan is just the magical time of the year where everything is good, everything looks beautiful, everything is, you know, magical, everything is just, everything is just unhappening, and that is all we can say. So when you feel that hunger that uh, people feel, you tend to feel the less privileged, you do a lot of acts of reward that will help you help the less privileged. On this note, I want to call on people. The past year, I've taken a lot from people. We all know, like, I don't need to, I don't need to, you know, keep hitting them. Now, I don't need to keep hitting this part, but it is just a reminder. For some of us, things are becoming, like, things are coming back to the normal, but for some, things have deteriorated in their own lives. Because some people, a lot of people have lost a lot in terms of, like, wealth and health, you know, in a lot of ways, we have lost one thing or the other. And first, um, the pandemic has affected a lot of people in different ways. So, if we, and there are a lot of flyers I have seen, especially on social media, you know, moving around, going viral to help the needy to donate. It's a very good thing. I do love that. Like, for one, to set up an organization to help the less privileged and to even seek donations from people in order for them to help. Like you want everyone to share the reward with you. You cannot do it alone. You need each other to help one another. But as you are doing that, if you have the opportunity, if you have the capacity, please do it, please donate. But before you do that, look closely within your own proximity. Like how many people that are close to you do manage to put a foot on the table three times a day? Look at that. Look at those people, help them first. Look, you don't need to look far, you, need, you just need to open your eyes and see. It could be your neighbor, it could be your own siblings, it could be your own parents you don't know because parents have this, like, especially if their kids are successful. Parents are happy for their kids' success, so they feel some parents cannot ask their children. So your parents, friends, you know, people around you, your own relatives, that widow in your area with three children who cannot ask for a dime from you, please look closely before you go about donating to people outside. First, help your people that are close to you. Help those that are within your own proximity. If you help them first, I believe like the world will definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you abundantly. There's a saying in house like, Yida be koshiba ankri waji. It's like, the house is not full, but you've taken the food outside. First, feed the house and then take it out. It's like, I can't explain it to be honest. Like, I can't give a full explanation in English because some sayings are just like, they just only make sense in that language. But this saying literally does make a lot of sense in this context. So please, if you want to go about helping people, it is a good thing. I'm not stopping you from that, but please, First, help those who are really close to you before you go about even those outside. And also, Ramadan is a time where, in some part of the world, it is a time like for the countries, like especially Arab countries, Sudan is now trying to take that. Uh, they're trying to close the schools in Ramadan, like to go on breaks on Ramadan break. So, because y'all, it's really hot. Like the situation here, it's really hot. Sudan happens to be like one of the hottest places I've ever been to. Even though I live in northern Nigeria, it's quite hot. But Sudan is hotter. 
So, you know, walking around the way to school, we had stress and tension. Alhamdulillah. When we heard that our school has extended our holiday until after Ramadan because we've been quite in, like our holiday has been really quite long. And we are so eager to go back to school, you know, finish and go back home and all that. So a lot of people were like, it's not fair, we need to get back to school, we need to, even if it's online classes, we will take them. But to be honest, like, Allah will not give you what you cannot handle. Maybe Allah has so that we cannot handle that stress. Like the stress, the stress will be really much for us because when you go to school, some people come back around like very close to Madrid, even though it's Ramadan, but some people they want to. Like if you just go out, especially you leave early in the morning and then you come back, you'll be very tired, you might not be able to have to start preparing something for your Islam, like you will be so exhausted, you won't be able to even go for Tarawih. Maybe that is why for me, to be honest, I feel like I just want to, maybe it's because I want to be optimistic because it's been really stressful and, you know, mentally draining to, you know, just be there without going to school. You're just sitting, doing nothing, and you know that, like, TikTok time is really ticking. I just want to be optimistic and I want to look at things this way. So I just felt like maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preventing us from not fully being present in Ramadan, like maybe we can, you know, and especially if we're about to finish and if you're like, if you're in school, you want to just study and then you, like your attention is kind of divided. You don't know what you want to prioritize more. Ramadan also will like, will be giving this less concentration and the concentration more on this. Things might be really hard for us. This is why I like to like, I just feel like I want to be optimistic and I want to think like this because if I start looking at it the other way, it is just going to keep me mentally draining. So I just choose to look at it this way. And I hope we all students please look at it this way because all we can say is Alhamdulillah if you are at so Ramadan mostly in the Arab countries, the closed schools maybe they reduce the work hours because, you know, it's a time that we need to get closer to Allah and work on ourselves. So people have created a routine for themselves. Some people sleep the whole day. Some, they binge watch Netflix. Some, like people, some they just surf on the social media, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, you know, we just want to keep our minds, we just want to take our mind off the fact that our stomachs are burning out of hunger and we just want to keep our mind occupied with something. Why not keep yourself occupied with the word of Allah? You know, the care, salah. You can just be lying on your bed and be the, and doing the care. And you get a lot of reward for that. They can like, I have, you get a lot of the care. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah wa azim. Hasbunallah wa ni'am al-wakeel. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. There are a lot of things you can do to keep your mind occupied. I know it is hard and I am urging myself and you because nobody is perfect. We are all guilty of this. The fact that I am standing before the camera and saying this doesn't mean that I am perfect. No, we are all victims of this because, I mean, we are all humans. So, I am calling on to myself and you all because mostly if you look at the videos that I YouTube, they're more like me talking to myself, me trying to, you know, remind myself about something and you all too. So I'm not perfect, you guys. We're all humans and we need to keep reminding ourselves. So instead of you watching Netflix, roaming, levanting on social media or sleeping all day, just try to engage yourself with something that will help you work on yourself spiritually, help you and mentally work on yourself so don't miss out on the word because and repent a lot because we commit sins more than we realize we do you don't know you might like you commit sins and especially in this world now that when you try to do the right thing now doing the right thing makes you people look at you as at holy when you're just doing the bare minimum so in a world 
world that we live like this, when we are trying to do the right thing, when we are trying to follow the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, people level you as, you know, ustaz, oh, he's an ustaz, she's an ustaz, things like this. You know, people are just trying to do the bare minimum, and some people try to level them. Haram has been so normalized in the society that halal looks weird, halal looks strange in our society. So I urge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us steadfast and busy. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us mentally and physically and spiritually present in Ramadan. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we get to witness more of Ramadan to come in our lives. And may he grant us the ability to make the most out of this period of time that we have been blessed with. So this is the end of the video. And yeah, I was not trying to give you tips or like a full Ramadan schedule for you to follow. By this time I'll be doing this, but you know, I, lots of people, like I personally have a problem with following schedules. I'm more of a spontaneous kind of person, so following schedules tends to be really hard for me. And maintaining, it's not just following it, I can sit down and like, you know, make all the necessary planning and all what. Maintaining it, oh my god, it's a disaster for me. I can't do that. So. I'm more of a spontaneous person. I achieve more in a day when I'm spontaneous than when I have a schedule. And with this, I say, Assalamu alaikum wa